The training vessel Galev brings Marshal Tito, Communist President of Yugoslavia, on a short visit to London. The Galev is unable to take the Marshal further upriver, so he makes the last stage of his journey in the Port of London Authority launch, Nor. Although the Galev was delayed by fog, the sun shines brightly on London as Marshal Tito gets his first glimpse of the city. Past the Tower of London, the Nor heads towards Westminster Pier. In the shadow of the Houses of Parliament, the launch approaches the pier. Spectators are kept well away from the landing stage as the Marshal steps ashore to be greeted by the Duke of Edinburgh, Mr Churchill, and the Foreign Secretary, Mr Anthony Eden, who has recently returned from the United States. Admiral Sir Roger McGregor is among the distinguished people who bid him welcome. Now the Marshal speaks a greeting to Britain. I wish to assure from this place the people and leading men of Great Britain that they should consider the people of my country as their truest allies because the people of New Yugoslavia are tending to us the same aim as the people of Great Britain. The Duke of Edinburgh and the Prime Minister accompany the Marshal up the steps of the embankment where a naval guard of honour is drawn up for his inspection. Strict security measures have been taken to guard Marshal Tito and few spectators are allowed within the area of Westminster Pier. Thousands of Yugoslavs have been screened by Scotland Yard and some who are known to have strongly opposed the President's visit are being kept under observation. This is the first time the Marshal has left his own country since he broke away from Communist Russia and the Foreign Office Secret Service have warned MI5 that there is a very real risk of an attempt to harm him during his stay in Britain. The Duke wears the uniform of an Admiral of the Fleet for the first time for this occasion. The inspection over, the Marshal prepares to leave for a short private meeting with Mr Churchill. As the Marshal steps into his bulletproof car, a magnesium flare explodes 40 yards from him. A cloud of blue-grey smoke rises, but no damage is done as the cavalcade, which includes a carload of Yugoslav detectives, makes its way to Downing Street. No spectator, except pressmen and newsreel cameramen, are allowed into Downing Street as the Marshal and Mr Churchill arrive. Even the location of the country house where Marshal Tito will stay is not known, but inside number 10, the Yugoslavian president can relax in company with the Premier. No information is given as to the discussions planned between Marshal Tito and the British government, but it is believed that he has come with three demands. For more aid from the Western powers, for more arms, especially aircraft, and to negotiate for a meeting with Italy over Yugoslavia's claim to the port of Trieste. Later, the Marshal, again accompanied by his bodyguard, drives from Downing Street to the Cenotaph in Whitehall. Mr Churchill makes the short journey on foot. At the Cenotaph, a huge wreath bearing the words, the President of Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia, is laid by the Marshal at the foot of the monument in honour of the dead of two world wars. The brief ceremony of homage draws to its close and the Marshal bids farewell to our heads of state. The policies of our two countries may not run parallel, but it is to our mutual advantage to work more closely together and Britain gives a warm welcome to the President of Yugoslavia.